Hi there, I'm Mark Stutman from Folkway Music. I hope you're all doing well. Here's a short little video about these four guitars right here. They are all Gibson J35s, and they're all from the early 40s. Um, these two are from 1940. This one is from 1941, and this one here is from 1942. It's, I think, the first and only time in my life that I've had four J35s in the store at once. And the fact that they are all natural finish early 40s J35s is kind of extra cool. We can really compare and contrast them and, and, and figure out what what the differences in tone and feel um, are about and how they equate to differences in construction. Um, in the end, ultimately, they're not night and day guitars. They are all very similar guitars um, with a couple very noticeable differences. Um, 1940 guitars, like these two right over here, uh, from the front, you can tell that they're 1940 maybe now that you see them relative to 1941 and 42, if you look at the pickguard material in the 1940 versus the 41 and 42, you'll see that it's a different batch of, of fire stripe. Those two pickguards match. These two pickguards match, but they are different. Also in the 1940s, the bridges are different as well. I'll bring this closer to the camera so you can see. If you can see the shape of that bridge, um, it has these sort of angled bridge wings to it and lacquer finish, um, and that's, that's generally typical to 1940, this, this looking kind of bridge, um, versus here's a 1941 bridge, an unaltered 1941 bridge. You can see how the wings are very different. Um, so those are outside differences. Uh, something else, um, well, actually we'll get to that. Uh, on the inside of the guitar, uh, the bracing of all these guitars is actually very similar. Um, all these guitars have a 92 degree X brace angle. Um, so the X is 92 degrees, which is tighter than the earlier Gibson guitars, which was about 102 degrees. It's also tighter than the later guitars, the Banner and Beyond, which was back up to 102 degrees again. So that tighter X brace angle uh, was instituted when Gibson dropped the third tone bar. These have two tone bars, not three like the old J30, older J35s. When they lost that third tone bar, they tightened the X brace angle um, to support the top uh, better. Essentially, I guess they thought they were going to loosen the top up too much by removing a tone bar, so they tightened the X brace angle. And that basically existed for a very short period in 1940, end of 39 into 1940. And, uh, and then they opened it, uh, sorry, into 1942, and they opened it back up again with the banner guitars. Um, these 1940 guys here, they have unscalloped braces, straight braces with the 100, with the 92 degree angle, and then these guys have scalloped braces. Aside from that, the only other difference is all of these guitars, 1940 and 41, they have a bridge pin spacing of two and three eighths like older guitars. But in 1942, they got the new two and one eighth string spacing. Same thing that Martin had done in 1939. And so these guitars are wide space. This is a narrow space guitar. Interestingly, the necks are kind of all over the place. Every one of these necks has a, um, a width of the 12th fret of two and an eighth inches. Even the really wide space guitars are two and an eighth at the 12th fret. Generally, the string spacing, uh, the fingerboard width at the 12th fret equates to what your string spacing is at the bridge. So a guitar with two and three sixteenths spacing would have two and three sixteenths width, in theory. There's plus and minus to that, and most companies use two and an eighth of the 12th fret. It's interesting that these, the Gibson's uh, wide space guitars also had two and an eighth over here. Um, even the guitars, these both guitars have one and three quarter inch nuts, two and an eighth to two and three eighths. This guy here has a one and 11 sixteenths nut. It's actually even skinnier than 11 sixteenths, but it's a whopping over an inch thick this way, so it feels massive. Um, but it, it still goes to two and, and three eighths down here at the bridge. This guy here, one and 11 sixteenths, two and an eighth, like a banner, well not really a banner, part, some banners, but like all uh, post-war Gibsons. Um, so if you get into measuring the top thicknesses and back thicknesses, they're pretty consistent. They're actually pretty heavily built guitars. Um, all of these guitars right here at the top is where it's, in the middle of the top is where it's thickest they are between 120 and 135 thousandths of an inch thick, usually around 125 to 132, really. 
and, uh, and they get a little bit thinner on, as you go to the outside. Um, and then the backs of the guitars are a bit thinner still. They're 110 to 120 thousandths of an inch thick. Um, but the bracing and bridge plates and on, on them are, are pretty consistent. Um, they sound very different. And I, you'll notice that I have some of these strung left-handed. I'm left-handed, so I did that so that I could just show you the sound differences between them. That third one, Tommy over there, is my friend Tom's guitar. He lent, loaned it to me for this little comparison, and I haven't restrung it, because it pretty much is the same as this guitar right here. Um, anyways, so the 1940 sound. Now the setups aren't so great because I just threw left hand strings on them, so there's some buzzes and some high action and stuff. So that's this guitar. They all have light strings, they all have different saddle heights, so it's not a real apples to apples comparison. And I'm just going to play a G chord at you so that you can hear what that sounds like. And then the 1942 guitar. guitar in the mix, I'd take this guitar. Um, this guitar is all about warmth and mellow and intimacy, and if I wanted to play quietly in my kitchen um, and listen to notes sort of decay and do cool, quiet stuff, <laughs> that would be this guitar. And this guitar splits the difference, which if I play this guitar upside down, it's kind of, my attack is different righty and lefty, but... Um, <laughs> is kind of more along the lines of this one here. So what, what this tells me is that it doesn't have a lot to do with the bracing of the guitar. It has a lot more to do with a piece of wood being a piece of wood. And, um, and I'd love to be able to say, okay, well this guitar sounds this way because the bracing is this way, or it sounds this way because the neck material or the neck shape is this way. There's nothing that you can say. I'd love to tell you otherwise, but Really, it's mostly about a guitar being a guitar, and each one of these J35s, they're each great. I'd be happy with owning any one of them, but they're all a bit different, and that has largely to do with the wood, the actual tree that the guitar top is made from, or back is made from. This guitar here is a replaced bridge as well, um, which could be imparting some, some tonal differences. It's got a tall saddle and a replaced bridge, and um, but largely, it's, it's about the guitar itself sounding a particular kind of way. So it kind of takes a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of the sort of power out of the argument that there's a difference between a scallop brace one and a non-scallop brace one. Um, mostly, it's just about the piece of wood being the piece of wood. If we had a three-bar J35 here, it would sound very different. I guarantee you that. Um, it would be more like this guitar. Those guitars, the three-bar ones are, are, are really powerful, loud instruments that are great to cut through a mix, to do fiddle backup. Um, they're not the mellow, intimate, uh, expressive variety of guitar. And I've always felt that way about most any particularly big guitars. Um, you either get these kind of mellowy kind of guitars, or you get these powerful guitars. And you're trading between them. You either get the power or you get the mellow, and it's not too many guitars that will give you absolutely both of those. Anyways, uh, I hope you have found that kind of interesting, and um, and uh, sorry that I can't sell you or give you these guitars. There's only one of them that's going to be available soon, and, um, you know, it's still interesting to see them all. Anyways, thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.